Grant Cardone, entrepreneur, real estate mogul, best-selling author, and also self-proclaimed 10X king. But is this guy some visionary genius, or is he just another flashy scammer? Today, we're diving deep into the world of Grant Cardone, somebody that I followed for quite a while, examining his aggressive sales tactics, his polarizing personality, and whether his wealth and success are legitimate as he claims. He actually has a pretty interesting backstory. He was born in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and he built up a multi-million dollar empire from a family that didn't really have a lot of background in, in wealth. His business empire spans real estate, sales training, and motivational speaking, probably among some other things. His journey from a troubled youth to a business powerhouse is undeniably remarkable. However, with his success has come a fair share of controversy. Grant Cardone is known for his lavish lifestyle, which he flaunts without apology across social media and his live events. But is this just really smart, effective marketing, or is there something more dubious behind the flash? If you're new around here, my name is Paul David Thompson. I'm the CEO of Real Estate 101, where we teach the fundamentals of commercial real estate. So this is a business that I'm also in. We operate in the similar field as Grant Cardone, if not the identical field. So I'm extremely familiar with his work and reputation. Many of our clients, in fact, have invested in his programs and they've shared with us their experiences. One absolute Absolutely undeniable aspect of Cardone's success is his ability to sell. His sell tactics are bold, aggressive, and sometimes controversial. Cardone preaches that if you're not 10xing your efforts, then you're falling behind. His philosophy is revolves around massive action really ambitious goals in creating extraordinary success. And candidly, that's something that I would like to get behind. And these are all things that I believe in as well. However, this aggressive approach can be off-putting to some. His sales methods, often described as extremely high pressure and absolutely relentless, have drawn a lot of criticism. Detractors argue that his tactics are way too pushy, designed to basically overwhelm prospects into buying. Let's examine four common critiques of Cardone as an entrepreneur and real estate mogul. The last one might surprise you. So let's start with critique number four, his overly aggressive sales tactics. Cardone's sales techniques often border on manipulative and coercive. His approach frequently rely on extremely high pressure situations that create these limited time offers that aren't really limited time or exclusive opportunities to push investors to make a quick decision. So think of an aggressive car salesman, but amplified, like 10X amplified. This undoubtedly contributes to his net worth. It raises some serious questions. His sales pages are really flashy. If you look on them, they use every trick and technique to create urgency to buy the product. And they're filled with promises of success. And to some, this screams scam. But does being a, a hard seller make him a fraud or just a, just a really savvy business guy who knows how to get a deal done? And to be very frank, we use some of the same techniques in our own marketing, but there's a fine line between presenting a compelling offer or creating artificial urgency or scarcity that really isn't there. Cardone style can be off-putting and it can leave a bad taste in some people's mouths. However, I can just find no evidence suggesting that he doesn't actually deliver a product. Clients reported that his courses contained valuable information. So ultimately it's up to you as the buyer to decide if the value of his one of his courses justifies the cost. I don't see any reason to call it a fraud or a scam. Now, critique number three is the high cost of his programs. Cardone offers a large variety of high-priced training courses and seminars. Some reports suggest that the price of these programs far exceeds the value that's being generated. So leading some people to ask questions as well or not, he's just a really skilled salesperson who doesn't actually deliver on his promises. His flagship event, the 10X Growth Conference, attracts something like 10,000 attendees each time he has it. Uh, the ticket prices range from 1,000 to like 20 grand. In recent years, there's been some backlash, with some describing it as more of a celebrity pep rally than any sort of actionable advice. While showmanship is absolutely crucial in selling, it's also essential to deliver value that matches up to the hype. Otherwise, you risk being labeled a scammer or a froster. From discussions with investors who've purchased products from Cardinal University and the 10X program, who have attended his conferences, many found the courses valuable and said it helped them actually generate yields in their life. While a lot of people really enjoy the energy and the pop and circumstance of the conference. While I also found other attendees who questioned if they got any value from the event at all. Value is, of course, in the eye of the beholder. So potential buyers should always do their own due diligence 
and it's up to you to make the call for yourself. I just really couldn't find any, like a smoking gun or a compelling testimonial that led me to believe this was a scam. He puts out a hypey event. If you want to go to it, have a good time. This moves us on to critique number two, which is questionable endorsements. And this one actually starts to get a little more serious. A significant part of Cardone's promotional strategy involves endorsements from respected public figures and industry experts. His seminars feature a lot of well-known speakers, including names like Donald Trump, Kevin Hart, Tom Brady, Magic Johnson, Usher, it just, the list goes on and on. I mean, these are like heavy hitters. However, many of these speakers are of course paid to be there, which creates a misleading impression of a genuine endorsement. This tactic is designed to lend credibility to his events and convince attendees that his approach and investment strategies have broad influential support. In reality, these appearances may not reflect the speaker's true opinions about Cordon's methods. And from what I can tell, when they're being paid, they're not being disclosed that they're being paid. So when someone's endorsing what there's going on, you don't know if they're being paid to say it or not. So when you're getting paid to say something, I think it's important to at least mention that and fully disclose. While hosting celebrity-filled events is not inherently a scam, it can come across as a, a bit disingenuous. When you're investing other people's money, your ethical standards are just really high, and you should be absolutely beyond reproach. So consider someone like Warren Buffett, who has annual shareholder meetings in Omaha, which doesn't generate nearly as much controversy, and in fact is widely respected. So if you compare Uncle Warren versus Uncle Grant, which one do you think is more respectable? Your call, but my vote's with Uncle Warren. Last critique, number one, and this is where it really gets juicy, Cardone Capital's misleading statements. The branch of his company called Cardone Capital is responsible for raising capital for real estate projects, which is a normal, reasonable thing. But it has come under some criticism for its suspicious high returns that just seem unrealistic. And actually, upon examining Cardone Capital's SEC filings, something that I do as part of my business anyway, I was shocked by what I found. I'm used to reading these things, and this one is just a little bit different. The fine print reveals some surprising practices. So first of all, Cordon buys the properties first, not inside his fund, then sells the property to the fund at a premium that is not disclosed. So profiting from both the sale and the commission on the transaction, then after he holds the property inside of his fund, he takes a cut of every rental payment before dispersing it and charges investors a management fee. Also, investors' capital is used to reimburse all maintenance and upkeep charges. And the real kicker is number four, investors are locked in indefinitely, unable to recover their principal until Cardone, whenever he wishes, decides to sell, which he states in his filings that he's reluctant to do. He's not looking to sell these things quickly. And then if he does sell, he charges a disposition fee on the total sale amount and takes a cut of any profit. While none of these are illegal, these practices, some of them are common, other ones not so much, especially the lockup period. If you combine that with Cardone's boastful social media presence where he is talking about how rich and famous he is, it starts to raise some serious questions on how this guy is getting rich. <laughs> There's even an, an ongoing lawsuit against Cardone Capital alleging that there are violations of the Security Act based on material misstatements or omissions in certain offering materials. Now, that case hasn't come to a conclusion, so we don't know if he's actually going to be found guilty or innocent. A, a lawsuit doesn't make someone guilty, so you want to absolutely give somebody the benefit of the doubt until there's a final ruling. But it starts to make you one think about situations where when there's smoke, there's probably fire. So bringing this all to a head, can Grant Cardone really help you? Is he a good place to invest your money with? Is he a genius or a froster? Well, he's undoubtedly an incredible marketer and salesperson. That first and foremost is what I take away from learning things from Grant Cardone is just witnessing that the fact that we're talking about him and not about either one of us means that he's doing something better in the marketing field than the rest of us. In fact, his YouTube series about his experience on Undercover Billionaire is fascinating and it offers a lot of practical life and money lessons. It was basically his commentary on his experience on hit the show Undercover Billionaire. And this guy legitimately went to Pueblo, Colorado with $100 in his pocket, a cell phone, uh, with the challenge of creating a million dollar company within 90 days. And he ended up getting a valuation of something like $5.5 million. I mean, he effectively conjured this business out of thin air. It was actually really impressive.
as a salesman, Cardone has, I think, cracked the code. I mean, he's great at it. Even if his tactics are over the top, he gets results. Does that make him a scam or a fraud? I, I don't think so, not necessarily. However, after reading the reviews of his 10X Growth Conference and the details I found in Cardone Capital's offerings, kind of gives me pause. It's crucial, obviously, for you to do your own research and read the fine print anytime you get involved in anything. Don't let any single person like me or any one video like this convince you uh, without your own thorough investigation on your own. My goal here is to help you make informed decisions about real estate investing, but that requires your active participation too. Always remember, it's buyer beware. Personally, I prefer not to do business with someone who makes me feel like I'm constantly on guard, like they're gonna take advantage of me, uh, which is the vibe I get when I watch Grant Cardone after doing all this research. I just don't think I would get a good end of the deal. Like he's always going to win and you're always going to come out with the shorter end of the stick. Therefore, I will not be investing in Cardone Capital. Let me know what your opinion of Grant Cardone is. Share your thoughts in the comments below. This investigation was particularly interesting as it actually changed my initial thoughts and perspective about Grant Cardone. I went into this really kind of a fan and I'm actually curious to hear what you think. Make sure and check out this next video, which I promise will stimulate your mind without any of the fine print.